Well, here we are back in Landview, and you're all safe and sound, mm. well taken care of. Yeah, and exhausted. I don't doubt it. That was a long plane ride, and in your condition, that had to be tiring. Mm. How's the pain? Well, it's pretty dull right now. Larry says it's just a matter of healing, and, well, I guess it's going to take some time. Well, you're in good hands now. I, uh, called the police in Buenos Aires. Oh, did they hear anything about Cordentina? Not yet. Let's just hope they catch up with him. I hope they do, because if I know, if I know Kate and Cord, they're not going to stay out of it. Oh, Clint, maybe we shouldn't have left Buenos Aires. I just pray that they don't need us. I feel badly about Tina and our grandchild, and, and I hope the police do find her. But I'm very worried about our son, Clint. I'm worried about his life in front of him. Well, Tina and Cord were happy once. They can be again. You know, a scare like this could, uh, could make Cord forget all about his bitterness. But he cares about Kate Sanders, and she could make him happy forever. Tina will only hurt him again. You know that, Clint. People do change. Let's hope it happens to Tina. Well, look, I'm, uh, I'm going to take off. You need some rest, and I want to get home and see the kids. And if uh, I hear anything from the authorities in Buenos Aires, I'll, uh, I'll call you. Yes, and you need some rest, too. Please, don't feel like you have to come back later, okay? Well, we'll see. Okay, now, before you go, would you go into my bag over there? There's a, a box with a pretty ribbon tied around it. Oh, that's yours. Open it up. <laughs> Happy birthday. Have you forgotten? Oh, I guess I did. I don't even know what date it is. <laughs> it's about the only thing I had a chance to do before I got shot. I've always remembered your birthday, Bucky. All through the years, whenever March the 9th rolled around, I always get this pang. I always wondered how you were. Now that is a belt. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, well, it sure is. I hope you like it. How could I not like it? Of course, I'll probably weigh five pounds more when I, when I strap it on. <laughs> Look, you're exhausted. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take off, let you get some rest. And I do like this. I'm going to get home and show it to my boys. They'll probably want one. Ace will probably want one. <laughs> Thanks. And Bucky? Thank you again for, for coming to Buenos Aires and bringing me home. No problem. Thank you. You get some rest. Okay. Ah, no more snow. 
snowballs. Cut it up. Let's get in there. Oh. Can we call Dad now, Grandpa? I'm afraid Clint's going to have to call us, Kevin. We don't know exactly where he is in Buenos Aires. Well, I bet you, you want to wish him a happy birthday, though, don't you? Yeah. Well, you are going to get a chance, and I know it, too. But first, you guys, get your jackets, go hang in them down the hall, and see if you get a hot chocolate, okay? Okay. Go on. <sighs> Lord, oh! Tell you, this is the first time I can remember the mansion actually looks, uh, lived in, huh? Uh, tonight, after we, uh, tuck the kids in, why don't you and I sneak out for a quiet dinner? Well, now, wait a minute. Who would uh, babysit? Pamela. I have a number of servants. I think one of them can handle them. Oh, I don't know, Asa. I mean, I'd feel like I was giving up my responsibilities if we didn't stay. Well, I'll tell you something, sweetheart. Once they're in bed, all they do is sleep. Yeah. But I'm not here to entertain you, see. I'm really here just to watch those children. <sighs> Pamela, watching is one thing. Smothering is another. Relax, loosen up. I mean, why can't the two of us have fun while we're here? You mean playing house? Well, you seem to be enjoying yourself. I know I am. And I think you see a different side of me with the kids. Oh, that's true. That's true. I do see a little bit more of Jeff Stewart poking out all the time. But it's not just the kids. You here, I mean, I'm, I'm really a different man. Really? Why? You don't uh, see those wings sprouting back here? Yeah? I know. I see these little horns <laughs> spreading out right here. May I tell you something? You really could change it up. Someday, you may make some woman a very, very good husband. Pamela, stop fooling around. The only damn woman I want to marry is right next to me. Asa, we played that marriage game once before. And I lost. And I don't see that you came out a winner either. We learned by our mistakes. I did. Give me another chance, Pamela. This week. Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> well, let's talk seriously. We've had our skirmishes, expensive ones at that. Yeah, I'd say. We enjoyed them. I mean, even though we got angered at each other, isn't that right? Yeah, sometimes. But over and over and over again, you prove to me that you don't know how to have a normal kind of life. It's always got to be one kind of dramatics or another. Honey, I was just trying to get the attention away from that Pete O'Neill. I thought you endangered dying of boredom. The man is Lay deadly. off! Just lay off Pete O'Neill. Listen to me, you do not get any points for knocking him all the time. I don't know how he scored any points in the first place. Anyway, okay, without him. Please, what about us? You know, the truth is, is I'm really, I'm really beginning to enjoy my life as an independent woman and all this freedom, just like you told me I would. And when I finish renovating the inn, I really want to run it. Oh, Pamela, that's for, that's for clerks and business-like people. You don't want to run a hotel. You, you talk about boredom. Now, wait a minute. We just don't see everything exactly the same. I can't go back to the life I had with you before. I mean, the idle rich. I mean, it was stupefying. It really was. Run the hotel. That's fine with me. But we belong back together again. Look at how we got along the last few days. And the fact is, it was a blessing that Kim had to run off to San Francisco to take care of her poor sick mama. Oh, right. You know, I'm glad you really brought up Kim because uh, she called earlier while you were out, Asa, and uh, spilled the beans. I mean, you sent her up to Cal San Francisco when Clint had to go into Buenos Aires, and there was never, ever any illness in her family. You got oh. me again, Pammy. <laughs> you know, it's true. I can never trust you again. You think this whole thing is just a big joke, and all it does is prove to me that every chance you get, you'll manipulate me again. It was the only way I could get you to move in here. The only chance I got, you were looking at a man really in love. I am looking at a man who's obsessed by what he can't have. All right, meanwhile, Kim is in San Francisco. Yes. Clint is in Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. Will you just help me out with Jessica and Kevin and Joey <laughs> till one of them come back? Are you serious? You really don't think you can handle them by yourself? Pamela, I don't have the patience to handle them. Please. Oh, all right. Hello, Pa. Oh, well. Hi, Pam. What the hell are you doing back home? Sí, sí, Soler, gracias. Señorita Gabriela, I am afraid no one was able to save Tina. The boat went through the Iguazi Falls. What about Jamie Sanders? My men found Enrico. 
He confessed of shooting Jamie, who went out of the boat. We presume he's also dead. And Tina, they'll never find her. That makes four deaths. First my father, now Tina and her baby, and that American criminal. All this grief brought on by greed. Max! Ramos, was that your helicopter up there? Yes. Why the hell didn't the pilot do something? He could have dropped a rope or something. Why didn't he try to save Tina? The chapters cannot get close to the falls. Otherwise, they would be pulled by the gravity of the falls. And he couldn't land in time. Fine, nobody was in time. We weren't in time, you weren't in time. Max, are you all right? I this is my ankle, but who cares about anything? What about your companions? Are they all they right? They saw it, Kate and Cord, I saw it. I'm very sorry, Max. We will try to conduct a search in the river for her body and uh, Jamie Sanders. Yeah, well, if you find his, just tie a rock to it and drop it in the lake. Of course, you could do the same with your father. Look, I can't help what my father did. Yeah, and I can't help how I feel. Well, welcome home to you, too. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to him. We're both glad you're back. Oh, wait a minute. Of course we are. It's just a shock to see you home so soon. <laughs> Well, uh, it was real important to get Maria back here, and so we flew back today. How is she? Weak and in pain. It's gonna be a while before she's fully recovered. What about Cordero? Well, I don't know that much about Cordero, unfortunately. The only thing I do know is that uh, Jamie Sanders and some Argentinian drug dealer took Tina hostage. What? When did that happen? Well, I don't know the details. But uh, Kate and Cord and that fella Tina ran off with, uh, Max Holden, they went after him. What about her baby? The police are involved. Just hope they catch up with him. How are my kids? Oh, Jessica is absolutely wonderful. It's the calmest and sweetest little baby I ever saw. Smiles all the time. She does. She looks more and more like Vicky. Huh? They're kind of wearing me out, so uh, Pam was good enough to help. More than you and Kim could handle? Kim's in San Francisco. Under dubious circumstances. And Pam volunteered to move in. No, it was coaxed into it. But now that you are home, Daddy, I can pack my things and move out. Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Honey, you, you uh, can't leave. We need a woman around here. Oh, I'm sure Kim will come right back just the moment you call her. Glad you keep me up to date when anything that happens with Tina. Sure. That poor child. Now, that's what she really is, you know, a child. Even under all that sexy clothes and makeup and everything. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't go yet. I know. It's a special day. Ah. My son is a year older. Oof. Will you forget about that, huh? <laughs> Has Vicky called? Afraid not. Oh, well, uh, I'm gonna go upstairs because I know the boys are waiting to see you as soon as possible just to see if the, uh, if the baby's up yet. What are you doing with Pam? Trying to convince her to give me one more chance. I was making some headway before you came in. She didn't seem all that anxious to move back to me. You uh, sure you're not fooling yourself? Actually, Clint, I'm getting more optimistic every day. Hmm. Well, I'm glad one of us is. You really loved her, didn't you? I've behaved rather badly since you've been back. Gabrielle, it didn't make sense. I didn't swear my undying love to you. I didn't promise to return and pick up where we left off. I know. So what is all this anger, all, all this bitterness? Something happened. Yeah, what? Something that changed my feelings. Well, what, some fantasy? You didn't meet any men you were attracted to and suddenly I became the love of your life? Now why do you act as though I never cared about you? I never treated you like some plaything, Max. I never felt that way about you either. But there is a big difference between caring and madly in love. Well, how did it happen with Tina? I, I can't explain. It just happened. The last thing I expected was to fall in love. It's, it's just one of those twists of life, you know? Yeah. A lot of things happen you don't plan on. Yeah, like my father dealing in drugs and committing murder for a profit. And a fling that just sort of Gabrielle, comes out. I didn't mean to hurt you. You have to believe me. Just like I didn't mean to hurt Tina, but she's dead. I, I don't understand it. How, how can someone who's so filled with life and carrying a life uh, just, just be dead? 
Yeah, well, I'll just leave you alone to mourn with your grief. I have other things to do, and one of them is take care of my own grief. Just wait, wait, wait. But you can come back with us. Come on, it's... Uh, I'll help you with anything you want. Your father's funeral and all I that. don't need your help. I can get along just fine in this world without your wonderful charity. What is this charity stuff? What... what where does all this anger come from, huh? Can't we just... Isn't there enough pain? Why do we have to keep tearing at each other? Do you know? I promise you everything and all you got. Get up! Oh, don't! Get up! Please stop it! She's dead. We couldn't save her. We couldn't save your baby. We both have you to live with it. You would have brought her down here, and you got her in danger Come in the in. first place. Yo, why don't you, with a little help from her brother, why don't you punch her out? He's right, Corey. If it wasn't for me, she'd still be alive. Look, I had a chance to shoot Jamie when he was taking Tina away. yourself for not being able to shoot your own brother, all right? After everything he's done, I should have stopped him, Cord. Cord? I never knew there was any trouble down here for us. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I never knew that she was really pregnant. Mary Lynn, it's Maria. Maria, hi. I haven't talked to you in a while. I know. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Dad's still out of town, though. Oh, really? Did you know that he left? Well, yes, but I heard there were two different versions about where he went. Ah, uh, yes. So, um, how are you? Well, actually, I'm calling you from the Landview Hospital. Why? What's wrong? Oh, it's a very long story, Mary Lynn. I was shot, but don't worry, I'm all right. Shot? How did you get shot? Um, listen, Maria, do you want me to come over? Oh, could you? If you're not busy, I'd love some company. I'm on my way. Do you, uh, want anything? No, 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 nothing. Thanks. Okay, um, I'll see you soon. Goodbye. What's going on? I'm not sure, but, uh, I'll tell you all about it on the way to the hospital. Come on. Well, thanks, fellas. Oh, I forgot all about it being my birthday until just a little while ago. How old are you now? Never mind, never mind. <laughs> That's a secret. I feel about 90. You hear that, boys? That makes him older than his pa. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Pam and I have a gift for you. Oh, all right, Clem, first you have to make a wish and blow out the candles, huh? There you are. There you go. Ooh, oh. Grandpa, bring him over here on this side. Nice going, Dad. Well, thank you, son. <laughs> Did you wish for Mom and you to get back together? Well, you know your dad pretty good, don't you? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. I figured it couldn't hurt anything. Sometimes birthday wishes do come true, you know. Well, let's see what we got here. <laughs> huh? Okay. That's for me. It but is, Gran huh? But Grandpa helped me pick it out. Well, he did. Oh, well, let's see. Yeah. Whoa, look at here. <laughs> Boy, this is pretty fancy. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go to the disco in this, aren't I, huh? You don't know how to disco. I don't? No. You're right. I don't. <laughs> See this next there you one. Go. This is for me. Oh, from Kevin. Oh. oh boy, that's pretty. What is it? Ah, a pair of trousers. Oh, I'd say that grandpa. Hey. Kevin and Joy have pretty good taste, don't you? They sure do. Where do you see this one? Pam, help me pick it out. Uh, in spirit, maybe, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Got it. Oh. All right. Wow. 
Oh, I won't be going to any disco in these. No, but you'll be able to kick a lot of butts around. Hey, son, what are you stop? Oh, all right, this is a figure of speech, boys. See, I do, see, I do need you around. Yeah, you sure do. Oh, boy, thanks a lot, everybody. I really appreciate it. Give me a hug. All right. Ah, now thank can you. Can we have cake? <laughs> can you have cake? Yes, you can have cake. We'll just forget about dinner, okay? Uh, in that case, I think we better go get some forks and some knives and some napkins, huh? What do you okay. say? Come on. But, Dad, I'm Come sure on, Mom will call you to wish you a happy birthday. Sure she will. <laughs> sure she will when, he, when she gets her memory back. Whatever birthday that might be. This week. Son, uh, forget about Vicky for a while. Huh. Oh, yeah, sure, that's real easy to do. You know, the one present I really want, I can't have. Well, not at this moment, but maybe soon. You know, she hasn't even called. She hasn't even called to say hello to the boys. Now, what do you make of that? What do you think that is? Huh? Some, some shrink got her under 24-hour uh, hypnosis? Or does Tom Dennison have her so wrapped up in him that she doesn't even think of her own kids? When she comes to her senses, Tom Dennison is out. Now, come on, I told you, I'm feeling very optimistic every day, not just for Pam and me, but for you and Vicky, too. Hmm. You know, you're starting to come off like some Pollyanna. Better watch it. It's kind of strange on you, Paul. So, that's how it happened. It was just a freak accident. Me instead of Max. Thanks. Now, tell me what is going on in your life. Well, I've been seeing a lot of Rick. Yeah. In fact, we've decided to go steady. Rick? Rick Gardner? By Mary Lynn Dennison. <laughs> He's terrific. He's sweet, a lot of fun, intelligent, and he likes me a lot. Well, I guess so. Congratulations. You know, I was beginning to think that you were giving up on the male population of Landview. Just about. Now, tell me about your father. Where is he really? He's, uh, he's just out of town. Well, Clint told me that he's in New York with Vicky, and he also said that you've been lying for your father. Well, don't listen to Clint. Now, Mary Lynn, I'm your friend and your dad's. You know you can confide in me. Maria, just let it go, okay? Yes, of course. I'm, I'm sorry. Have you ever heard of a man from El Paso named Squeak Sheldon? Squeak Sheldon? No. No, and that's a name that I would remember. Why? Well, he stopped by the carriage house today. He said that he had just gotten out of jail and that he knew my father. He also had a packet of newspaper clippings for him. He made me kind of nervous, so I resisted letting him in. Mm -hmm. And what did he want? All he said was that Dad was partly responsible for him going to jail, and that uh, he wanted my father to look at these clippings, but said if I looked at them, they would upset me. Oh, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't listen to anything he says about your dad. But it was almost like he said that to make sure I read those clippings. Well, you make sure that you don't. Your father is a wonderful man and an excellent father, and you are living proof of that. Maria, I know you never knew my mother, but has my father ever confided in you about her? Mary Lynn, why are you asking me that now? Well, because Squeak made it sound as if my father has secrets, and my mother's always been like a secret to me. All I know is he loved your mother a lot. And when she died, it was, it was so tragic. Well, whenever I start to question him about her, he quickly changes the subject. Well, I guess it's still very painful for him. Believe me, if your father wanted you to know about her, he would tell you. I guess you're right. Mary Lynn, I, I feel like I'm, I'm ready to doze off again. This medication makes me so sleepy. Okay, um, would you like me to stop by tomorrow? Well, why don't I call you in the morning, huh? All right. Thanks. Thanks for coming by. You're welcome. Now you rest and get well, okay? Yeah. And when my father calls, I'll tell him about what happened. Thanks. And, and do give him my love, all right? Okay, I will. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Sir, 
So, you're all here. Have you found anything? Well, um, the helicopter spotted some uh, boat parts, wreckage. But I'm afraid there's no sign of your wife, Senor Roberts. What about Jane? Nothing, Senorita Sanders. I'm very sorry. I'm sorry for all you have endured. Another helicopter is on its way over to pick you and... Where is Gabriela Medina? She took off about a half hour ago. I don't think she's coming back. Well, the three of you must go back to Buenos Aires and fill in some official reports. Then you can go back to the States. A private word with you, Senor Holden. Ah, uh, yeah. Sure. You'll excuse us. Uh, do you have any idea if Medina's daughter had anything to do with the cocaine trade with that? Absolutely not. She's shocked by this whole thing. Well, she was very uncooperative when I tried to question her. Her before. father is dead. What do you expect? We're not all holding together too well right now. I can understand that. But somebody else must have been involved besides Medina and Sanders and the hand, Enrico. We must move quickly before the others can escape. I could care less. I'm sure Gabrielle could too. Take my word on this, all right? Trust me. Her father raised her to be a proper lady. There's no way he would inform her of his activities. Okay? He tried to put her up on a pedestal, not someplace she always wanted to be. Have you heard anything about my mother? What kind of condition she's in? Oh, yeah, she was taken back to Landview, Pennsylvania, by Mr. Clint Buchanan. Clint came down here? Yes. We are good. That way we won't have to worry about bringing my mom back, too. And once we do get back to Landview, I'm going to find out exactly why she was down here in Buenos Aires in the first place. Uh, there's one more piece of bad news, Senor Holden. <laughs> So they can't get any worse, go ahead. I'm afraid it can. I'm afraid the government will have to uh, seize your property for the time being. This can take several months. Month? Wait, well, what the hell for? Well, because um, coca was being grown on your property. And because the bureaucracy works very slowly, uh, this may take some time. Great, sure, why not? Impound it, impound everything, give it to your grandchildren. This old Bella Vista, ever since I took it over, it's just been a nightmare. I'm gonna tell you something. There's some dreams you should just not go after. From what I've seen today, you're a real sweet cookie and probably as innocent as you look. So do us both a favor and don't go nosing around inside that package. I don't want to see you upsetting your pretty little self. They may even decide I'm an undesirable down here. Take my ranch away completely. Want some coffee? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Did my brother uh, give you any idea if he was hanging out around Landview? Yeah, he said he was gonna try to find some construction work. Maybe I'll fly back with you too. I'll see if Steve and I can cook something up. May as well forget about Bella Vista. Shoot, it's not the same without Tina anyway.
you leave? You know, Max, you don't make a whole lot of sense a lot of the time. That's just it. That's why we're so perfect for each other. You don't make sense 99% of the time. Yeah, well, we are still at an impasse, no matter how stupid that is. No, there's no impasse. I'll make a deal. You take it or leave it. You stay with me, have the baby, then you go home to Landview, Court throws you out again, then you come back here, we raise the kid like I originally offered. And you're so sure he's gonna do that, huh? I'm gonna take my chances. Because I believe when he does, it might not matter that much to you. In fact, you might be glad about it. It never would have happened anyway. Why think about it now? Just another dumb dream. Chopper's coming. Kid, I'd like to have a few minutes by myself. Understand this. I really don't. But since you have decided to take my wife and my child and have them there with you, I would appreciate it if you could keep an eye out on them for me and give them some peace. And if you could also let them know that I'm I'm down here. And I still love them.
You're watching the Totally Outrageous Tina Lore Marathon. Stay tuned for another episode.